Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit differently. Um, I told you guys I picked up all of that yarn and the looms from the Goodwill. And I just figured I'll just pop on here and show you guys what I've been working on. I'm actually in the middle, maybe, of um, like a full size blanket, like full size okay <laughs> like this big compared to a person okay so yeah I just want to show you guys what that looks like as well as give you some tips if you're into yarn or crochet or looming or um, knitting but uh, I, I'm not and I'm not an expert okay just I'm putting it out there I'm a novice at this I have no idea what I'm doing so I just want to show you guys what I am doing okay so there's two basic types of looming that I know um, one is with the round loom and the other one is without any loom at all any tools at all and I'll show you guys what I'm doing okay this is what this is what Nicole at Chronicles of a Crafter is doing <laughs> so here's my blanket okay this is the end of it, the bottom of the part that I've loomed so far. And it just keeps going various colors. All of this, all three colors were on this package right here. Um, this is the second package and these three colors were on it. Okay, the dark gray, this, um, what is it? It's like a cantaloupe color and this pretty blue all of that was on one loom I'm sorry on one spool and it was connected right here by this little piece of plastic right so I've just been going through my loom looming along and it just comes out the bottom side of the loom so if you notice it's a circle in order to make an an open object a blanket um, a scarf even you don't close this part right here you just leave this section undone and everywhere else around is connected really simple guys so so let me grab another loom so this was the goodwill loom all right same color as mine same size as mine it had a little break right here and I fixed it with construction adhesive and Gorilla Glue and I clamped it together to make sure that it still holds its form, it's still the same size, it's in the same shape. So it's just a little dirty I guess from either whomever owned it prior to or um, not really dirty because I've cleaned it but it's a little discolored okay so there's some where the pink should be pink it's really brown it's just a little discolored but I've cleaned this before um, gluing it and uh, made sure that I had a nice clean surface to hold the glue so I'm gonna go to the end of my oh I can't on this one let me grab a spool that I can go to the end of so here's another another package of this and to open these up you just you can just pull it apart or you can cut it right so I'm just gonna make sure that none of my yarn is connected to it and I'm just gonna pop that section off so here is the end of this particular yarn let me move my blanket so you're not confused and I'll show you guys just a couple of key things to know if you're interested in looming. Now these packages of looms, I think they come maybe three or four different sizes to a pack. I bought this at, not this one, but I got this at Goodwill, but I bought my kit at Joann's or Michael's. 50% off coupon, um, you know. Uh, it came with the full kit with instructions and um, yeah it's just the whole thing and I think it's about somewhere between 20 and 30 dollars and then there are different sizes right so there are round ones there are round looms there are mini looms you can make pom-poms for the hat 
you can make small baby hats with the mini looms. There are also long ones, long rectangular ones. You can make scarves and, um, you know, different things in that shape. There's one that's shaped like the number eight. <laughs> it's like an infinity loom. And that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that one I believe you can make like Afghans and huge things. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm making a blanket um, just out of this size loom and I'm going to connect all my pieces together individually okay so it will be a blanket it just it'll be a large blanket it just won't be um, made from that extra large spinning loom um, there's also different sizes so this one in particular has 41 pegs going all the way around um, I believe I have one with longer pegs on it and that only has like maybe 30 pegs around so with this size loom you're going to get a much tighter stitch when you have a wider um, same shape same size but longer and wider or more spaces in between each peg you'll get much larger um, less tight um, stitches okay I'm gonna show you guys how I cast on I'm gonna show you guys how I loom and then I'm gonna show you guys how to cast off okay so those are just the basic three things that you're going to need to know the other thing that you're going to need to know when picking up yarn or when looking for a yarn to um, to make something with, you have to decide what you're going to make, one. And then two, you have to decide like what is the thickness, what is the, the weight of the, um, the item that you're making. If it's a scarf, you want it to be pretty thick and warm. If it's a blanket, same here. Um, but the weight of the uh, yarn is going to determine what you know the weight of what you're making so down here at the bottom of this packaging and I'll try to get it to focus for you any second now there we go um, these are the items that you need to know right the weight what needle size whether you're knitting or crocheting and how to care for the product after you've made it okay this is how to care for this particular yarn so the weight of this is six they come anywhere from like super lightweight to super duper bulky okay there's even seven or eight all right and this is what this is this is a six it's mid weight okay um, it's a little on the heavy side um, if you're using knitting needles um, it suggests that you use an eight millimeter knitting needle there's numbers on the bottom of your knitting needle that'll tell you exactly what you um, are looking for or if it's the US size knitting needle it's a number 11 here for the crochet needle same thing eight millimeters or a number 11 and these are just the care instructions you can wash in cold water um, tumble dry on low do not iron do not bleach and do not dry clean okay so let's just get started you can figure all those things out yourself this is my start point it has a peg on the outside of the loom I just take my looming of uh, my yarn actually and tie a little slip knot on there so a slip knot looks like this right and you wrap it around and you pull through that little loop right there so you leave yourself a little on the bottom here and you have a little loop up here so I tie myself a little slip knot hook it on to that little hook down there on the outside of the loom and the longer piece is what we're gonna loom with right so to cast on I'm just wrapping my yarn gotta get this little piece out the way I'm just wrapping my yarn around each peg right this is a cast on it's pretty similar to crocheting and knitting actually it's it's a very similar to um, to knitting with two needles <clears throat> because for the most part with two needles when you're knitting you do have to cast on with crocheting you can start in the center of your um, of the item that you're making and work your way out with looming you'll start at one end or the other right you're starting at the bottom 
or if you want to flip it over the top of your project so this is just a quick little tutorial of how I loom some people would do um, one peg at a time some people do all the way around and I'll show you what I mean by that but here we are coming up on the end of this um, this row and all we've done was cast on our yarn to this loom and then you push everything down because you're going to do a second row so you get to the end here let me move my little um, slip knot out of the way you get to the end here and you don't want to cross over to finish this up because we're making a blanket you close this up and now you have a full circle leave it undone and you have an open object right so that's um, basically our cast on holding your yarn tightly but not like you know super tight you do want some slack in between um, we're gonna just go back the opposite direction all the way around so I'm gonna just stop at the open area that that last peg and go back the other way right so this first one that we're going back on has to be completed before you can do the others so this is what I mean by doing one peg at a time some folks will do just that continuously like they'll wrap one loop it wrap one loop it I'm not doing that this will give you a different stitch completely um, I wrap my entire loom again the opposite way it's a lot quicker for me and I like the stitch that it gives so I'm just going to go back the opposite direction on the loom just going all the way around with just one quarter turn or actually it's a full turn all the way over the entire um, peg just the same way that we did when we cast it on and as I go through I'm gonna push down my previous uh, row this is my row I'm just gonna push it down just a little bit and um, to give myself room for this second row and I'll show you guys one full uh, one completed stitch right so here we go I'm going to pull let me move my let me move that out of the way I'm going to pull this and pull it over that top row take the bottom and pull it over that top row and push it down as you go pull the bottom one over the top one push it down bottom over the top bottom over the top all the way around and basically guys this is just one full completed row of whatever it is that you're deciding to make whether it's a blanket or an afghan or a throw or you can even make um, like front and backs of pillow covers you know throw pillows etc and then just add a zipper and stitch it all together um, on all on on all three sides and put a zipper at the bottom and then you have yourself a cute little um, pillow cover so I'm just moving my yarn out of the way at the end over here and then I'm just gonna continue um, pulling that bottom row over the top row and that's all I did all the way around over and over again with um, with that yarn so this is something that it's so simple to do that if you can do this watching television you can do this you know it's just mindless really it does not require too many um, too much counting it doesn't require too much um, reading of instructions it doesn't require you to learn a different language for crocheting and um, and knitting it's not like you know pearl one stitch two like all this you know all these different abbreviations that you would have to learn um, on the back of the packaging of the yarn there's usually instructions on how to make what's on the picture of that packaging 
we just completed a full row your um, item your project is going to grow out the bottom here okay and that's how I've gotten my um, my blanket to be uh, as long as it is okay so I'm gonna leave this on here I'm gonna grab a different loom and I'm gonna show you how to cast off okay I'll be back okay so to cast off and this is just a little project that someone started in the package um, that I picked up at the Goodwill someone started this um, you can pull this tight and make it into a little I don't know a baby hat or a doll's hat something like that I'm not sure what they were trying to make this is a much smaller ball of yarn so it ends right about here um, and uh, basically what you want to do to cast off is make sure that you have enough to go around your entire project at least one and a half times okay so that's about what I have left here and I'm going to show you guys how I cast off to cast off it's pretty simple okay you wrap your um, and this one is a full circle right so wherever you stop is the last stitch as opposed to um, looking for your little outside peg for your start and stop points so I'm going to loop one over pull the bottom notch over right and then remove it from the um, from the uh, yarn I mean from the uh, the loom <laughs> sorry I blanked out there for a second guys um, and then I'm going to pass my yarn here let me just get this I'm gonna pass my yarn through the entire thing so here we go pull it all the way through like that and now you have a completed stitch that won't come undone on you loop it over pull it over and pull it all the way through okay and then you pull that one off all right really simple loop it over tuck your needle underneath the bottom loop that top and pull it all the way through and then you can take this one off so you'll see that this right here is closing up each one of those stitches right you loop it over tuck your needle underneath that bottom loop and you pull your yarn all the way through and then you can take that one off the peg I hope my demonstration is working like I really do um, want to incorporate some other types of crafting on this channel junk book making is a lot of fun ephemera making is also a lot of fun but um, yeah that's not all that I spend my time doing although it may seem that that's all I spend my time doing because I do a lot of it but um, yeah I think I, I also spend a lot of time doing this stuff so I don't know where I find the time I'm just fortunate that I have the time to do it because um, I know a lot of you between watching the videos and then actually you know going to your jobs and trying what I've made it's it's time consuming so I do appreciate each and every one of you who spend your time here on this channel and watch my videos um, you know some of them are some of them are basic but some of them are you know you learn something new so and that's all I'm trying to do here is just teach you guys a little something new that just something else that I do on a daily or whenever I have time so yeah all I'm doing is just threading what was on the loom in a very simple way so that I don't um, undo everything because if you don't do this step everything that you've done in the project will be lost <laughs> if you do not cast off you will never be able to uh, save the project and this is really a simple thing to do so yep this is casting off um, you just go around the entire thing loop it through pull that bottom one hook that top one and pull it all the way through and then cast this one off so I'm going to show you guys the um, the other method that I know how to do very well and it's looming without any tools or 
any um, loom. It's basically with your fingers, right? So your tools are your hands and it's so simple guys like I mean so simple um, you can't you can't make a mistake and if you do make a mistake there are ways to correct them but um, you know it's just so 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 simple and uh, the name of the yarn that I've been using is called um, off the hook I believe it's a lion lion brand um, yarn so in the yarn world there are so many brands of yarn people have their favorites um, I kind of like this this blanket yarn I uh, you know e even for a scarf I would make a scarf not with these colors but definitely with this weight of um, of yarn I tend to uh, make a lot of blankets with them on the loom my mom has made me quite a number of blankets uh, crocheted and this weight yarn does create a very nice weighted blanket it's just so warm and it's like a hug from your mom right <laughs> so here we have this little guy right here and I suppose you can give your end string a little tug and this is what will close up this hat right because we went all the way around Yep, you can just give it a little tug and um, close up all of this. And now you have yourself a little hat. Like, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe if you have a baby in your home or um, if your kids play with dolls, this would be a great little thing, right? Yeah, that's so cute. And whatever you have left over, if it's too much, you can um, tuck it in. And then cut it but if it's just a little bit I would just use my little tool poke it through several little sections here and then just pull it out through the middle and um, and keep it with the with the loom tied in a knot and keep it with the loom I mean with the uh, with the project just so that um, you know nothing gets pulled away or un unraveled this right here is the beginning part. I didn't do this section. This was this came with it. So yeah, I would just wrap it around and tuck this in. Anyway, I just want to show you guys real quick. These are the sizes of the looms that came with this package. We just used this one to make a very tiny hat. Don't know how, um, how <laughs> what I'm going to use it for, but. Uh, yeah, here we have the three sizes that came in the package, and I believe there might have been a very tiny one to make a pom-pom. That's a whole nother thing. All right, let's go on to this guy off the hook. All right, it's so cute, guys. This is a no tool needed loom basically you can make so many things with this and I'm going to show you guys what I've done with this all right I'll be back in two ticks all right guys so I'm going to show you guys how to use the um the no tool this is the no tool um yarn it already comes with all of the loops that you need you don't have to make your own loops uh, so this is a well, let's just use this one this is a um, ball of yarn right you just have to find the end as you would with any any ball of yarn really and once you get to the the end right which is right about here you can lay this out across your bed and see exactly like how much of it you're going to need to make a full blanket or if you want to make a throw you just pull the amount that you need wide and then work your way up so that you can have you know um, a longer blanket so I'm basically going to get rid of my tool I don't need that I'm just going to give you guys a little demo like a little 12 by 12 section of how to um, accomplish this so let's just say you're making um, a blanket and it's this wide all right you lay out your lo your little loops in the width that you need and then you take your loops off the ball and rotate it around this way okay 
So now you have your first row. This will be your second row, right? So you take your second row and you loop it through just like this. Take your first row and loop it through to your second row. And you're just doing the exact same thing over and over again. Just looping your yarn through itself. And the loops are already there. You might want to put like a little uh, marker on the end. So let's just say you have like a pen and you just mark right there to keep that loop in place. And you're taking your first loop and looping it through your second loop. Right, so it's really simple to do. Um, you, what you want to make sure that you do is going in the same direction. You want to continue um, going in the same uh, pattern. So you're taking your bottom loop and sticking it through your top loop. So I'm taking my second row and looping it through my first row. Right? And that's what's going to keep it going in the same direction. About the second row is going through the first row and we're like basically ending that first row. Okay. Then your second row will get passed through your third row and it'll just keep going from there all the way until you have you know a good section going. So I'm just going to keep going on here and again this is one of those mindless things that you can do either like riding in the car. I did a full blanket riding in the car up to South Carolina. It doesn't take very long um, from Florida to South Carolina is about five hours so in about five hours between listening to a podcast and um, looming or looping I made an entire an entire blanket. It wasn't a very large blanket, but it was more or less a throw or some people call that an afghan. Okay. So, and this helps that the uh, loops are all different colors. Um, if you're doing this project, um, it's nice that you have a multicolored yarn. And um, yeah, it does it does help. So I'm just almost done with this first row right here. I'm just taking my second row and looping it through my previous row. And here I am at the end of this row. So what you want to do at this point is then take your, your loops all right, you're going to take your ball of yarn, roll it out another 12 inches or so, or however many loops that you need, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take this row. This is where the start of my third row. It is going to, um, yeah, let me move it this way. This is the start of my third row. I am going to take it and loop it through the previous row. And as I go down, you will start to see a, a blanket form. <laughs> so here, I'll just speed this up so that you guys can see, um, you know, something, something um, start to develop here, right? This just looks like a ball of, a ball of yarn. But as I go through, it'll um, start to look better.
Well, that didn't take very long at all. Although I sped this video up, um, it only took me about 20 minutes to use up the entire ball of yarn to make this entire square right here. And um, I'm going to show you guys how to finish this off. If you want, you can tie a second ball onto here. So I have another ball right here. I can, um, or a skein as they call it, I can tie the end of this to this and just continue going all the way down. Or what we're going to do at this point is end this project. So I'm just going to finish off this section right here with my last few uh, loops. And then I'm going to show you how to cast off. There really isn't anything to cast except to um, use your fingers. You don't really have a tool on this project, but um, using your fingers, you can still achieve the same, the same uh, results to close off the project so that nothing comes undone or is unraveled while you're using the product so I hope you guys enjoyed this video it's a little different than our normal um, junk journals and whatnot but to tie everything back together you can then take something like this and make it into a book cover right you can then um, take an old book put it in here wrap this around it just like we would a normal um, fabric covered book and um yeah make it into a very soft very soft junk journal all right so to cast off here's what you're going to do here are our remaining loops in this project even though we didn't go all the way to the end we stopped right here you're going to continue by um casting off so what you do is you take your last loop pass it through the previous loop and pull it forward forward meaning to the right okay then you take the next loop over push that through the previous loop and pull that over to the right same here and you do this all the way across until your project is sealed up like that and it looks similar to the bottom right it's all it's all closed up so none of your stuff will come undone or unraveled and even though we didn't um, have a full row to finish this off, again, you can tie another skein onto this, um, onto the project and just keep going depending on how far you want your, your item to go. Or you can just make squares in this shape and then just stitch them together on the side, right? Lay them side by side, run a, um, a darning needle through it with some matching colored thread and um, or yarn <laughs> keep saying thread um, some matching colored yarn just a plain ball of yarn and um, basically just stitch the two projects together or the eight squares together to make yourself a full blanket so here we are at the end of this row but we still have these down here so your project will be slightly um, like I won't say lopsided it's just uneven on these last few so here we go I'll show you what that means see how it dips down right here because we're closing this off right but if you wanted to add another project onto it you can alright guys I'm gonna leave you right here this has been a long enough video I do appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out with me and watching my videos I also appreciate you guys for subscribing and sharing these videos with your friends and family so thank you very much and um, yeah guys check out my links down below don't forget to like and subscribe again don't forget to hit that bell for notifications after you subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up if you like the content here on this channel and thank you guys thank you stay naturally curious and have a super crafty day bye